Hello and welcome to GrossyMath.com where math is for everyone. Today we're going to find the factors of a quadratic equation uh, and we're going to use a multiple choice strategy because we're practicing for the TSI. So let's get started. All right, so today let's take a look at our problem that we have here. We're going to find the factors. This should say factors. That has a typo. We're going to find the factors of the equation, etc., etc., etc. And here are some factors. The word factors basically means these pieces that are inside parentheses. So here's a factor number one, and here's factor number two. Factor number one, factor number two. Factor number one, factor number two. So those little parentheses pieces, those are factors. All right, so let's start matching up pieces here. There are two important rules to do this process. Or, well, the first rule is not as important as the second rule, but let's, let's go through it. The first thing is, if you have an equation that's set up this way and you want to find factors, you should try to make the equation have the exponents decrease. Okay, that will help you a lot. And then the second one you should do is to make sure, the second rule is really the most important. Uh -huh. You have to make the equation equal zero. Okay, so there has to be some algebra on this side and equal to zero on this side, okay? So let's go into it. Uh, let's see. I see that this equation does not equal zero. It has something like this. So to make something equal zero is very simple. Uh, remember our little code, the equal sign. Uh, I mentioned this in previous videos that the equal sign is the king of opposites. And the opposite of positive is negative, or plus is minus. The opposite of multiply is divide. The opposite of squared is square root. Okay, so those are basically your high school opposites, uh, for the most part. I mean, there are some more advanced ones, but these are good for the TSI purposes. All right, so let's take uh, this term. And I want to make one side be zero. I want it to be empty. Zero means empty. So I'm going to take this term and just move it across the equal sign. And if I do that, I have to honor the opposites rule. So if it's negative on this side, I have to make it positive on this side. So I'm going to say a positive 3x squared minus 22x minus 16 equals zero. That keeps everything equal by changing that sign. Okay. Now, why did I move it all the way to the front? I mean, I could have moved it to the back, okay? Uh, the order of terms does not matter. Negative uh, 22 and x, negative 16, they're right here. Negative 22x, negative 16. So this negative 3x became positive 3x squared, and then equals 0. But why did I put it in the specific order I did? Well, I want the exponents to decrease. That was my rule number 1. So here I have a 2. This guy would basically have a 1 because if there's no exponent it counts as a 1 and there are no x's here so that kind of counts as 0 okay uh, well not kind of it does count as 0 uh, so let's eliminate those little pen marks there so that it doesn't get too confusing looking anyway now that I have it equal to 0 I can start solving this thing okay so there's a very easy trick you can use or well not really a trick it's more of a strategy because it is mathematical um, to use this strategy First, I'm going to look at the first term. And I'm going to look at the first terms here. x and 3x. OK, well, that would make 3x squared. So that matches. That's good. x and 3x, that makes 3x squared. That matches. OK, that's good. x and 3x squared, that matches. So that's fine. x and 3x squared, that matches. So that's fine. All right, so first, check the first term. We did that, and we didn't eliminate any choices. But we'll keep going. Next, step two, check the last term. Okay. Again, because I have my exponent decreasing and everything is set up properly here, I'm, I'm looking pretty good on this strategy. Negative 8 and negative 2. Well, here I see that the final term is negative 16. Please don't forget the negative sign. It's really, really important. It's not just 16, it's negative 16. Well, look right here. Negative 8 and negative 2. Negative and negative, when I multiply, would have made positive. So that means this guy is out because I want a negative. Positive and negative would make a negative, so I keep this one. Positive and positive would make a positive, so I get that one out. Negative and positive would make a negative, so I keep that one. Okay, so now I'm going to go 
to the third term, the one in the middle, this guy right here, negative 22x. I kind of took off the x there by mistake, so let's put them in a little box like that instead. Okay, negative 22x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my remaining choices and I'm going to do what they call draw the smile. Okay, so x plus 8 and 3x minus 2. Drawing the smile is a simple algebra strategy where you take the, these two and these two and you connect them. 3x times positive 8. So positive and positive makes positive. 3 times 8 makes 24 and x comes down. Okay, and now negative and positive makes negative. 2 times 1 makes 2 and the x comes down. Okay, so now we're going to combine those. Okay, so positive 24 minus 2 is positive 22x. Okay, does this say positive 22x? No, it says negative 22x. So right away I know, let me keep the colors consistent here, that b must be out. Remember, this was choice b that I was testing. Okay, which means that by default d must be the correct answer. Now someone might say, well, what, why don't we check d? Okay, well, let's check it. We'll check d x minus 8. I'm just going to draw another smile here. x minus 8. Let me make sure I don't draw on top of myself. 3x minus 2, uh, or plus 2 rather. Okay, so I copied choice D, and now I draw my smile. Negative 24x, positive 2x, and when I combine them, they make negative 22x, which is a perfect match to this term up here. Okay, so now you can see that all three terms matched. X and X made 3X squared. Negative and positive made negative. 8 times 2 made 16. And drawing the smile made negative 22X. And that's how you can find your right answer. All right, so today we reviewed a multiple choice strategy for factoring a quadratic equation. This is an excellent strategy to use on a TSI or any other standardized test. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon, and of course to visit the website at www.grassymath.com.